it's just the barbering is like it's very very essential to a lot of men and mm -hmm. it's a lot more essential than what people think you mm -hmm. know like especially when covid shut everything down that's when i realized like i took i took barbering for granted because mm -hmm. then this goes back to evolving through experience right mm -hmm. when they shut everything down i'm like man Okay, I got money saved. I'm good. Everybody hit me up like, are you okay? I'm like, man, yeah. I'm straight. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for a lot of other people because I'm pretty sure they're living check yeah. to check. Yeah. But in one of Robbins, I'm charging $40 a haircut. Mm -hmm. That's unheard of for a lot yeah. of people. The highest price was $30, yeah. you know? So they're like, oh, this young dude come, to, come from Atlanta mm -hmm. and shutting the city down. You damn right I was, you yeah. know, because I was that guy. Yeah. So it's time to put the clippers up. Okay, cool. I need a break. I need yeah. to rest. But one thing I thought about was, man, I miss the people so much. Mm. Like, people started calling me because word, around, word got around town. Oh, well, this dude cutting hair. I'm like, well, shoot, you go to him. Like, I ain't mm -hmm. about to get sick. Like, yeah. my son is about to be born. <laughs> yeah, you know what facts. I'm saying? Like, I'm not about to bring any foolishness to my BM right now. Yeah. But, man, when they opened up, when they, in March, when they opened them doors back up, mm -hmm. I never talked to my clients, to, like, the way I did ever in my life. Mm -hmm. And I used to always ask my big bro who cut, who cut hair next to me, I'd be like, bro, how do you establish that connection in the barbershop you talking to your clients so well man like i be talking to your clients more than i talk to my clients yeah. because like i just <laughs> yeah, have an old soul yeah, you know his that. clients are like you know between the ages of 25 and mm -hmm. 40 but once i understood the superpower behind just communicating just mm -hmm. saying hey how was your day man you yeah. all right or just missing somebody so much mm -hmm. it's like bro don't take that for granted yeah anymore. you know so exactly. even when i get tired and burnt out i've evolved to just understanding like hey if i'm tired hey bro i'm gonna let you know tired yeah. but I'm give you a, I'm gonna give you a dope cut yeah we just can't talk today you know yeah. what I'm saying I can't give you I can't give you all that you know exactly. what I'm saying and I'm but, glad you said that I, I don't want to cut you off but go ahead, go ahead. I'm glad you said that because we we've had moments like that probably maybe one or twice I could remember where it's like you just having a hard day and it, it's respectable but you mm -hmm. still give me the cut I asked for mm -hmm. it's just like and I think those are okay to people understand like we gonna have our moments yeah. and we gotta always acknowledge that we have in the moment first and understand like it's nothing personal with anybody and people have to understand that vice versa that's nothing personal like we're gonna have our moments and we gotta take those moments and like you said not even taking it for granted mm -hmm. because I think sometimes when we wait till we lose stuff that's when it's like we really understand the value in it so like you said during 20, uh, 2020 the pandemic it's like you really had to sit back obviously you still had people wanting to like get cut but it's like you realize you miss how much like it all played a part not just cutting people here but the atmosphere the energy of connecting with people learning something new and just the different energies that really helped you elevate your life What's um so, and with that being said i want to transition like we said i was going to get to it but parenting what would you say right now is has been your biggest and most impactful lesson with parenting oh man and give it for everybody <laughs> whether man female doesn't mm -hmm. matter i share the story with everybody mm -hmm. um let's hear it <laughs> It's my favorite story about mm -hmm. my uh, firstborn son, Cairo. Mm -hmm. Shout out so, to him. Shout out to my shout son. Shout out to all the sons, man. man. Shout, yeah, out, shout, shout out to out Cairo. Out. Shout out to Carmelo. Love him to Um, I picked Cairo from daycare <laughs> one day, uh -huh. and he just started walking. Mm -hmm. He had his little walking shoes on. You can hear, you can hear him from down the hall. Clip, 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 yeah. clip, clip. <laughs> so I get him out of his car seat, and, you know, he's at that age where he can't talk, but he mm -hmm. understands what I'm saying. Correct. Like, hey, stop. Don't do that. Slow down. Mm -hmm. All that. So I get him out of his car seat. Put him down. I say, Cairo, don't go, don't go into the house just yet because you got that stoop right there. You're gonna fall. Mm -hmm. Just wait on me. I gotta get your bag. Yeah. All you hear is clip, 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 dum dum. <laughs> of course, he I starts crying. Be like <laughs> oh no, it was funny. Cause I'm looking at him like, mm-hmm. You learned your lesson, huh? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, man. I'm like, okay, come on, go stay inside. You good? Man. Shake it off. You a boy? You know what I'm saying? You know, I gotta give him that tough love. Oh, we're gonna talk about bit. that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> so the next day. This is where I was. I almost cried as a parent, man. Yeah. Now it'd be like that. But the next you day, that. I put him down. I just watched him. I ain't even telling that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we walking up, clip, clip, clip. <laughs> he, he steps up, and I'm uh -huh. like, mm. "So you learn your lesson that quick?" Okay. <sighs> I don't. Good. You're not going to be a knucklehead. You're not going to yeah. be that hard headed. Yeah. So when it comes to parenting, man, like that had to be like one of the most golden moments for mm -hmm. me because I'm like, wow, like my son, he caught on quick. Correct. And that lets me know you're doing right. We can, we can mm -hmm. speed this up when you get a little older. Oh, we mm -hmm. we gonna have a ball. Yeah. <laughs> we are gonna have fun. Facts. Now I, I'm glad you said that because I feel like I I be trying to find that balance with it because like at what age? Cause you said because he was just walking, so he's about one or a little over one now. 
at this point. Oh, he's two years old now. No, nah, I know now, oh. but I'm saying at that moment when at he felt, moment? I guess he he was walking. So what age? Like probably? Nine months. Nine months. Mm-hmm. Okay, so no, nah, that's good. Take that back. Eleven months. Eleven yeah. months. Okay, so eleven months. That's super good. It's like, and that's where I feel like personally I struggle, and I think it's it's a it's a process. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. It's like trying to figure out how to instill like teaching him and letting him learn his own lesson without going too far. Because like it's been times I tell my son not do something, he'll still do it, and then he hurt himself. Obviously, he's not a major hurt himself, mm-hmm. but it's just like, bro, like. I'm trying to show you, but then I'm hearing from his mom, of course, and uh, obviously everybody matters, and like obviously that's his mom. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, what's the balance? Like, I want to show him, but it's like, is he too young? And I feel like babies are not too young. Obviously, babies are the smartest things out here, and, like smarter than all of us. They are. And they really are. <laughs> so it's like I'm watch. trying to instill. Yeah, I'm trying to instill. <laughs> like I feel like he knows what I'm saying, but he just don't care. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like I seen a, uh, a meme a while back. It was like uh, every time you try to tell, show uh, tell a, try to tell a kid to do something, it was like the lady. She had a bike and a helmet, and then she trying to get on the on the treadmill, like it's going sixty miles an hour, or whatever, and get on. It's like, and then the baby just ignores you and still does it. So it's like when you try to tell the kid to do something, and it's like, all right, how about f you? And I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing, and that's how the vibe I get. So then it's like I'm trying to show you how to do it, and then you hurt yourself, and now it's like I got to be the one to be there to comfort you. But it's like, bro, I just told you not to do that. Evolving through experience. Yeah, I know. I'm working on it. That's my point. I'm working on it. I'm just here to be transparent. V. Yeah, no, for real, for real. but. That's that's a prime definition mm-hmm. of evolving through experience, yeah. you know, just on the on the child's perspective and mm-hmm. on the parents' perspective, mm-hmm. you know. So there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know? there's nothing wrong. I mean, but at the end of the day, you gotta have patience mm-hmm. because, man, I remember I got some uh, hibachi. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I, I spent seven dollars on this man. Got fed the family, mm-hmm. door dashed it, yeah. put a nice tip in for yeah. buddy. <sighs> My son just started walking, so I'm sitting on the couch at oh, this man. level. I'm eating. You man, had I was the, hungry. You had it man. everywhere? Nah, I, I oh. had it on my lap, dog. Oh. I had it on my lap. <laughs> yeah. This dude, he's sitting next to me, gets up out his little uh his little <laughs> seat from eating. And he just come up to me, doom, flips the food over. I was like, <laughs> you talk about I <laughs> You had to <laughs> remember like, he a kid. Von, Von, so I'm like, let me go walk out, man. I'm, boy. I was nah. hungry, man. Like, nah, I, it'd be I like took that. about five bites of my food, yeah, man. <laughs> like, I nah. was Oh uh, man, so nah, you needed a Snickers. You know how it be when you're hungry. What? Man, I was yeah, so that my patience shot out, but I had to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was I was lost for words at that moment, but that's when I realized like I don't have it all together. Mm-hmm. You know, like exactly. parenting is a job. Like parenting mm-hmm. full-time. is full time and parenting mm-hmm. does not stop even when your child turns eighteen. Yeah. Because um I had a you know, having that talk with one of my clients, <clears throat> his mother her style of parenting is very, very outlandish. You know, mm-hmm. like, his brother is, you know, in his 20s, mm-hmm. and she still decides to kick him out, and he has nowhere to go. He turns homeless, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, that made me realize, like, parenting doesn't stop at 18. Just because mm-hmm. your child walks across the stage and graduates high school, yeah. that doesn't mean, oh, you go to college, all right? Yeah. You can come home and sleep, you know, mm-hmm. do whatever you got to do for the break, but then go back to college. No, no. Make sure check up on them. Make sure yeah. they're doing what they're supposed to be doing because at the end of the day, we're still kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I don't I don't try to belittle people, but that's why I tell you like, hey, have patience mm-hmm. with yourself, bro. Mm-hmm. You're still young because mm-hmm. when you turn 29 or when you turn 30 or when you turn 35, you like, bro, I was so young back then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're gonna really and then you're gonna be talking to somebody 23. Mm-hmm. You gonna be like. Oh, you are so young. Just calm down. Yeah. Slow down. You know. Hey, I hear you, man. I <laughs> so, mean, I feel. I mean, I'm gonna let you go. I don't want to cut your wisdom. Go ahead. Uh, but just, I mean, just to finish off on that, mm-hmm. it's like the older you get, that is, the, the older you get, the wiser you're supposed to become. Mm-hmm. But that's only if you seek that wisdom. Correct. You know, so because you can be 25 with a lot of wisdom, mm-hmm. but you still have to have the experience. Correct. That's where. That's mm-hmm. where the lack thereof comes from, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's where I say you really have to just be patient with yeah. yourself, man. Patience goes over so many people's heads. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I should be a pastor, man. Nah, the way, sure. I used to look at my pastor, he'd be like, <laughs> and I'd be like, why does he keep doing that? You know, I'm in high school, like, y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now that I see. Bot. Yeah, nah, man. for real. Now, I'm glad you said that because um, it, it's just the, the, to be transparent in a sense it's like I- I'm trying to figure that balance out mm-hmm. in the sense of, all right, I got time, but at the same time, I don't got time. And right. I feel like we've heard that so much. And not to say in the sense of like, I don't obviously I don't feel like I'm leaving anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I think when you put that type of energy in the universe, that's what's going to come. Um, and that's not the energy I'm putting out. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I feel like I've seen people 
not even in my family, but just in general, it's like they think they got all this time, and then you look up, you're you're sixty or seventy, and or even thirty and or forty, and you're not in the position you want to be. It's like I rather work OD hard now, so when I get there, not necessarily I'm gonna slow down, but in a sense of I'll be in a better place all around where I feel like, okay, now I've worked hard versus trying to work hard later on. And it's like trying to find that balance because we hear, oh, you got time, you got time. But then it's like, then you look up, you don't have time. And what whatever worth having is a process. Greatness is a process. And what you really want is not going to come overnight. So if I feel like I got to, if I keep waiting, it's going to be four, five, 10 years. And it's, I'm still sitting up. It's like, okay, I'm still in the same position. And those are the battles that we have at any point, I think, men and women, where it's like, you sit with yourself, it's like, yo, what am I doing with myself? And it's like, I think we all still trying to figure it out, don't get me wrong, but I think just always staying on your toes truly helps me. And I don't know if that's the the best way to put it or the best way to go about it, okay. but right now, that's the process <coughs> where I'm evolving. Just to be transparent, because that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll reel it in with, the, with these three points real quick. Okay. Um, it's a billionaire. I, I went to uh, Eric Thomas. Um, Shout out to Eric Thomas. Yeah, man. ET, man. I've been following ET for a long time. Very motivational. Yeah, for sure. Matter of fact, it was around this time last year, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a men's uh, conference mm-hmm. at Greater Travelers Rest, my, my old church. Mm-hmm. Shout out to E. Dewey Smith. Man, that... I have never been to a men's conference like that. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that. Like, men were so transparent. I'm standing in line randomly mm-hmm. waiting for the bathroom. Dude came up to me. How you feeling, bro? Good, mm-hmm. man. Man, that dude touched me. Yeah. He touched me too. Did you cry? What? <laughs> like that's how that's yeah. how open men would be, yeah. right? Just to give you a uh just to give you a, yeah. a, a visual. No, they say a lot though. Yeah, that, that really helps. <laughs> just walk up and say, Did you cry? Like, bro, bro what? Like, I'm t- yeah, yeah. I don't like, even what know you mean this. Did I cry? Like, I don't even know. Did you, you. cry? <laughs> but instead of me saying, I don't even know you, I was like, nah, bro, did you? Like, yeah, man, yeah. I did. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, cool. And we connected. Yeah. But um, it's this billionaire. Uh, his name is Jesse something, man. He's married to the lady who made the Spanx. I can't remember. I can't remember his name, but Spanx, there was a billionaire. Well, I don't even know what the Spanx is. <laughs> this dude, he made. Uh, he made. He used to be a hip hop. Uh, used to be a hip hop. Um, rapper, rapper and everything. But anyway, dude is just killing it on stage. Mm-hmm. But one thing that stuck out to me, he said, "Man, you have to move with a sense of urgency. Mm-hmm. You don't move with a sense of urgency, then yeah, time is nothing to you because you have to ask yourself, what is time." I mean, time is, it could be a construct to you. Mm-hmm. Time could be anything, you know? I mean, there's no such thing as time in the eyes of God. Mm-hmm. Everything is already laid out, right? That's why we have free will. Mm-hmm. But that always stuck with me. Move with a sense of urgency. That doesn't mean you don't have time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, you, if you're urgent, like, hey, man, I got to do this video. You got to edit a video. Yeah. Man, I'm going to put that video off tomorrow. No, let's do it right now. Mm-hmm. Or at least let's do something so you can lead up into doing it tomorrow. Correct. And it's like you feel good about yourself. You're not mm-hmm. like, hey... I got a whole pile of work, mm-hmm. right? This conversation we, I was just having with these brothers, you mm-hmm. know, uh, my man's right here said, hey, take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, take a nap? <laughs> like, come <laughs> on, <that's> bro. Help. <laughs> man, but, how old are you? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I said, you know what? <laughs> but he was just like, hey, I mean, you have to rest your brain. You have to shut your body down, you mm-hmm. know? Like, he made a very, very valid point. He said, okay, look at your brain as an engine of a car. A car can look good, but if your brain isn't working... Your body ain't gonna work. Yeah, the car ain't gonna work. That's you know a what I'm saying? Analogy. Yeah. Uh, third point. Uh, got this from one of my millionaire clients. Man, shout out to him. When it comes to time, right? Mm-hmm. I asked him. I said, "Bro, if you're a millionaire and you don't have friends, because he like he's from New York now, mm-hmm. <laughs> so he's like, man, fine, I ain't got friends, man. I don't do friends, but like, I don't trust. <laughs> I don't trust dudes like that. You know what he really said? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, because you know, we we've been trying to plan this link up because. We'll go back and forth about playing pool and everything. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm going to bust you behind in your yeah. old house, you know? Yeah. He's like, whatever, man. But he was like, Vaughn, I really rock with you, man. Like, yeah. you you really you really a friend to me. Genuinely, and, yeah. you know, he's in his 40s, mm-hmm. you know? So I don't look at age as a big deal, but mm-hmm. age is time, right? Yeah. Like, just because he's older than me, that doesn't mean I can't be his friend. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just want to seek the wisdom. And he mm-hmm. might learn something from me. Agree. But... I said, bro, how do, why you don't have friends your in your age group like that? He said, because when you turn 20, everybody's in their 20s. Everybody's on the same playing field. Everybody's mm-hmm. in college, right? Everybody's mm-hmm. having fun. You graduate college. It takes, what, three to five years for you to get into your career, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes it takes longer. Mm-hmm. But it takes some people eight years. Who knows? Mm-hmm. 
So in that in, in that in between time, you're trying to figure everything out. Cool. Mm-hmm. By your thirties, if you haven't figured it out yet, that's when you know people they start posting stuff. Hey, I'm going on vacation. Mm-hmm. Like this is where the downfall of social media comes in, at, mm-hmm. right? I'm going on vacation. I'm having my family. We're doing you know Christmas p- pictures. We're doing this. We're doing that. Cool. If you're not set in your career just yet, mm-hmm. then you're starting to stand out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have your family yet, then it's starting to stand out. It's starting to hit a little different. Mm-hmm. But that's only just based off your mentality. Yeah, mental, yeah, yeah. But most people are going to think like yeah. that. Man, I ain't got my career yet. I haven't mm-hmm. got my family started yet. I'm still stuck in the same position. What am I doing? Just mm-hmm. like you said. By the time you turn 40, if anything hasn't been accomplished, mm-hmm. then that's when the jealousy comes. Mm-hmm. That's when the hate comes in. That's when the envy comes in. Mm-hmm. That's when it's like, well, so what you did that I didn't do? Mm-hmm. You sat on your behind and yeah. you was lazy. You didn't you didn't sit with yourself. You didn't mm-hmm. evolve through experience. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So once he once he laid that out for me, yeah. I was like, wow. No, shout out to him. I see why you yeah. don't have friends. Because my mom, mm-hmm. when she was that age, she didn't have friends either. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom was Miss Debutante, the mm-hmm. the the head cheerleader for high school, mm-hmm. the most popular person in her hometown. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mom, like, why you you know, you <laughs> you were so such a social butterfly. Yeah. You get out here, you got three friends. Yeah. Why? Now I see. Yeah, <laughs> now for I sure. see. Yeah, and I, and I like you said, like being old. So, uh, would you say you you had a, a small group of friends coming up? And as small as relative, so it's just like if you define it as small, I guess small is less than. What, what would you define as small? Like less than five. You can say that. Oh, keep your circle tight. Yeah, you know, keep it tight. Yeah. I was I was a social butterfly. Mm-hmm. I tried to speak to everybody. I was mm-hmm. nice. I get that from my dad though. Yeah, you know, you, like, it's just a vibe, like just a genuine vibe. Yeah, yeah. like my. But kindling with my dad, I had to realize mm-hmm. without a past, we you can't know the future. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I started speaking to him, mm-hmm. this dude would be like, Oh, tell him I said hi. Mm-hmm. You know, such and such, tell him I said hi. I don't know. How do yeah. you know these people? Yeah. You, why would I tell them that you said hi? You yeah. don't know them. Yeah. But that's just how genuine he is. Yeah. That's how nice he is. It makes sense. And sometimes I feel I find myself, I go out my way, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Just to see, you know, just to get a reaction, see yeah. how they're feeling. You know but what I'm when saying? When they like, say no, when they don't say nothing, how you react? That's my mom come out of it. I'm, I'm a cancer nah, too. I, get, nah, I, I used to get yeah, petty, but now I just be yeah. like, okay, maybe that brother just having a bad day. Yeah. Because I was listening to Big Sean's interview on mm-hmm. uh, Drink Champs. Where? And Nori was like, man, I've reached out to you, man. You never reached out back. He said, bro, I really had a lot going on. I am sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Please forgive me. Yeah. But I didn't even realize you reached out to me. Yeah. So sometimes when you 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 hold the door mm-hmm. open for a young lady or you say what's up to a brother mm-hmm. and they don't they don't give you the response that you yeah. want. It's not you. Yeah. It's them. Because another lesson I had to learn when it comes to love, man, I posted my girlfriend on my on my page. Mm-hmm. I got all these followers. I'm showing the world who she is, who mm-hmm. we are. And I did a little tongue gesture and I kissed her. Mm-hmm. She said, hey, babe, I don't want to post that on my page. I could post a different video with us doing this, though, but mm-hmm. I just don't want to post you doing that. Mm-hmm. I'm looking like, man, what? Mm-hmm. Please. The ego came out yeah. of me, right? And I also didn't realize... I wanted her to receive my love the way I wanted her to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when you want someone to receive something the way you want them to, that's when you become selfish. Mm-hmm. And that's where I, society is so messed up now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because you can do a nice gesture for somebody. I could have mm-hmm. bought you roses today. Mm-hmm. You would have thought I was, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? No, I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, roses would know. be crazy, but I mean, I know our relationship. <laughs> you would have never, know. you <laughs> no, would've never known. You know what I'm saying? Relation, I know our relationship so far over these years. I wouldn't have been like something across my mind. But I would have yeah, been like, I got you. I'd have been like, Darrell, you're going to take these roses, you're going to smile for the camera, and you're going to say, look what V done got me. You know what I'm saying? Versus, oh, thank you, bro. Yeah. Nah, that ain't good enough for me. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. so. Just to resurface back. <laughs> Just to resurface Roses back. Roses would like. be crazy. But no, nah, I'm going to give you your flowers today, though. They're not physical flowers, but in the sense of, yeah, I got you. That's much love, man. Already, love. man. But moving on. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, for sure. That's funny. Um, what I want to say, I'm glad you was open and you, you willing to talk about that. Like, how do you feel like, what was the best way you was able to pretty much resurface that relationship with your dad and open up that can of worms? Because just to be transparent, even with me, like, obviously my dad always been in my life or whatnot, but I, I, we have our differences where it's like, I'll be the one that won't just reach out. It's like, not necessarily ignoring, but it's like, bro, like, you know, I, I feel like it's a lot of conversation I haven't been able to have on uh, in an actual in-person and really just take time without us having to go separate ways or without any excuses and it's okay. feel like and I, and I take accountability too let's be mm-hmm. clear I'm not going to say like it's just one-sided but it's like 
that's something <laughs> I still struggle with. But at the same time, it's also a reason that it makes me a great father to this day. So how do you feel your relationship has pretty much affected your uh, you being a father and how did you rekindle that i know that's a lot <laughs> i'm really in therapist mode i really want yeah, to nah, ask why when you're nah, when you're nah, we, like, we can talk about it i just want yeah, to go like, go, go I, I start there for you i want to come back to you yeah. i, I want to come back to that yeah, yeah. but we might go off camera though <laughs> i'm just saying i'm gonna be real with it <laughs> okay okay that's cool um so for the first question of course you have that I'm gonna call it the Nick Cannon syndrome off the mm-hmm. drum line. You know, when he came, okay. when he went back to his dad and threw them tickets at him, like because <laughs> I was yeah. confused for a minute. Nick Cannon, whoa, whoa, how I know that's not. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, now, that's shout a whole out to Nick story. Cannon, though. Nah, nah, shout, shout out, out to Nick, Nick Cannon. Cannon man. I got no problems with it, man. That's that man life. Hey, yeah. to each his own. If he taking care of them kids, that's all that matters, you know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, more than financially too, though. But I mean, yeah. but like, still shout out to him. Whatever works for them, most definitely. But uh, I call it, you know, that Nick Cannon syndrome of a drumline where he went back to his dad and he threw them tickets at him like, yeah, you know, you mm-hmm. was never a father to me anyway. You know, mm-hmm. um, you can you can let that fuel feed your fire mm-hmm. on the inside. But at the end of the day, you have to I had to ask myself mm-hmm. and this is what you have to ask yourself. Mm-hmm. Is that really love? Because mm-hmm. you're fueling. Oh, I'm going to be better than my dad. You know, so. But shouldn't we be? Hmm? But shouldn't we be? Just out of love, though. Okay. I see. Because okay. you're, you're, free, you're still feeling anger. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and when it's all said and done, when you do have a mishap, mm. is it going to be love that you're giving your son? Or is it going to be the same resentment that your dad gave you? Mm. So that's when you say, hey, I have to be different. This is how mm. I'm different. I'm going to love my son to the best of my ability. And not only am I going to stay into my son's life, not, not only am I going to stay into my child's life, I'm going to instill so much love that mm-hmm. when he sees me, all he knows is, oh, that's that dad. Mm-hmm. You know, like, no matter how long I've been gone, I could have been gone for a month. Mm-hmm. I come around the corner, oh, that dad. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, when I saw my dad, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's my dad. Cool. Yeah. You know, like, I have a photographic memory, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I, I could have not cut someone's hair for five years. Mm-hmm. I remember exactly how I did it, though. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do it exactly the same way because that's mm-hmm. how they liked it. I did not have a memory of how my dad looked mm-hmm. until mm-hmm. recently, last month. I went to surprise him for his birthday. Mm-hmm. The reason why I did it um, is because he's dealing with health issues, you mm-hmm. know, and I've lost a parent already. Yeah. So, Was it to health issues as well? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my mom Monkey passed away from again. lupus. So, okay. Yeah, she she was strong, bro. Yeah, like, shout out to her. To, yeah, man. Yeah. Shout out to my mom. Like, she was still working, feet swollen, mm-hmm. you know, Body deteriorating yeah. since the 90s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, so after losing a parent, it made it made me realize like life is short. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to give people grace and mercy. Yeah. Because no no matter how much crazy stuff someone could have done to you, yeah. you still always gonna remember the good things that they did for you. Correct. If you had a relationship with them, mm-hmm. and a good relationship at that. Yeah. So I always grant people grace and mercy. Um, I listen to Steve Harvey a lot, mm-hmm. especially Steve um, Harvey, yeah. yeah, man. Shout out, shout out to Steve, man. Shout out to Steve. BD, all the, yeah, the whole man. team, man. <laughs> um, I listen to his inspiration right when he comes on before his radio uh, mm-hmm. talk show, and sometimes it may be the same thing. But hey, even if it's the same thing, I listen to it again because I might have missed something the last mm-hmm. time I listened to it. Yeah, and one of my favorite inspirational um, morning things that he does, he says, "Hey, bro, you have to give people grace and mercy. Mm-hmm. You wake up." God has granted you grace and mercy just from waking your eyes up and mm-hmm. seeing the world another day. Because, man, I, I think I, I wish I don't cry as often, but mm-hmm. I wish I can cry when I hear somebody say, "Man, somebody went to sleep and they passed away in their sleep." Mm-hmm. Like a client actually told me that last mm-hmm. week. You know, like so desensitized. Not that we don't care. It's just like, yeah, it's just yeah. like man, like wow, like you talking about a woman was thirty five years old mm-hmm. passed away in her sleep. They just saw her the day before. Yeah. <laughs> vibing yeah. you know what I'm saying having fun yep. passed away in her sleep so that's why I give people grace and mercy mm-hmm. because yeah you might have pissed me off you mm-hmm. might have really made me mad mm-hmm. you know I didn't block you <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying I know a story <laughs> but I think about it and I say man <laughs> yeah. life is too short I'm yeah. better than that you know maybe I was angry at the moment yep. but I don't need to let that play out into my life 
Exactly. And and I think with that, uh, the same way we try to give it, I also think maybe what if this is karma for me if I want somebody else to also give me grace and mercy because maybe I had a bad day and I wilded out on somebody or didn't give somebody the proper respect they deserved. Mm -hmm. And now this is coming back to me for that same sake. So it's like, like I said, the same way I want to give it is the same way I would love to receive it. So I think that's something that we got to keep in mind when those type of situations happen because yes. it's, it's just so vital that we do. Um, and like I said, it's uh, it, it, I want to go back to this because even with your mom, obviously condolences to her. Mm. Do you feel like that's a reason now you take so great care of your health? Because knowing, like, obviously she passed, unfortunately, to this disease. But now it's like you're using that to be proactive. And obviously I know you up at 4 a.m. running a mile or 10 miles or whatever. And I think it's so vital. Everybody don't have that type of discipline. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like that's one of the reasons or the main reason? You could say that's one of the reasons. Okay. I mean, tomorrow's not promised, bro. Yeah, because, exactly. I mean, someone could tell you, like, man, this person passed away. Mm -hmm. They was healthy in the gym. They were just running. They eat, yeah. they eat good, yeah. barely eat meat, all that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, I wake up every day and I thank God, bro. Yeah. I be like, man, cool. you woke me up today, so I know I, mm -hmm. I still have a, a mission to mm -hmm. accomplish for you. Yeah. You know, because I live vicariously through God, bro. Like, mm -hmm. my talents, mm -hmm. <laughs> what I speak. Mm -hmm. How I walk, how I move, everything. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yes, we're sinners, mm -hmm. and I ask them for forgiveness for that. And that's where the grace and mercy comes in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, as human, we be, how can you, how can someone say, if you read the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. God says he made us in his image, right? Mm -hmm. How can you say I'm made in his image, but you're still not trying to practice mm -hmm. <laughs> what you preach? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Exactly. If you yeah, made yeah, his image, that part. man. Yeah. Give somebody their grace and mercy. They mm -hmm. they made you mad. Hey, it's okay. Now, if it's really that detrimental, talk about it. Yeah. If not, just move on. Exactly. Deal with your stress a different way. You mm -hmm. know, just yeah. inhale, exhale. It's out the door. You mm -hmm. have you have real life problems to be worried about. Yeah. Why are you worried about something so minuscule? Mm -hmm. Because all that's going to happen is it's going to put you in a temperament. Mm -hmm. gonna, then it's going to put you in a mood, and mm -hmm. you're going to stay in that mood. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, I mean, shout out to my woman, man. Yeah. Uh, she has taught me how to really l balance out my emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you're mad, you want to stay mad. Yeah. You, you want somebody to feel it. It's easier to stay it. mad, yeah. What? You want somebody to feel the energy. That's why yeah, it's so that easy part. to stay mad. Yo, not to cut you <laughs> off, it's like, well, it was like when somebody uh like uh boosts my wild, and like if I'm wild and somebody boosts it, like, mm -hmm. I forgot how they said it, but it's like they love when somebody fuel they, they wildness. <laughs> like if you're already mad and you wilding and mm -hmm. then you speak to somebody that agree with it, mm -hmm. oh, it's like oh, fuel you yes. up more. Yes. But then it's like when you get the person that say the other side, man, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, nah, for sure. But you don't, but, you don't need yes men. You yeah, know yeah, you don't, you don't. But then when you get that time where they fuel it, oh mm -hmm. yeah, now nah, I'm wilding and it's validated. Oh yeah, I'm lit. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, nah, so, for sure. No, shout out to her though. Yeah, man, yeah. she's a very, very happy-go-lucky person. Mm -hmm. And when we first started dating, <laughs> mm -hmm. our communication was so superb and solid. Mm -hmm. Like that was our foundation. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Good, yeah. To the point where we could talk about anything. Mm -hmm. We talk about. We had some. We had some tough talks, yeah. bro. You know, like, from the point where, like, you know, I think the hardest thing for a man to talk to their to they new woman about, mm -hmm. especially, like, if y'all of of age, mm -hmm. you know, is who did you deal with yeah. <laughs> in your past? Mm -hmm. Because Atlanta's smaller than what people think. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Like, you're going to run to some people, bro. And then I'm I'm very well known. Yeah. So, hey, I may have known somebody. that yeah. You know what I'm saying? You never know. Yeah. So, Drake said it the best. Don't no man want to hear them stories about his lady. Yeah. Let's get it out right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm not out here looking like boo-boo the fool. Yeah. But uh, communication was just superb. But when we have our disagreements, I don't like mm -hmm. to call them arguments, yeah. but when we have our disagreements, I'll be up here, and then I want to stay up there. I don't mm -hmm. want to just come down like, well, mm -hmm. it's okay, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah. Like, yeah. I don't want to do that roller coaster stuff. <laughs> yeah. I want to be right here. <laughs> but then I had to realize, yeah. like, this That's is the a, ego. This is my, this is my yeah. woman. Yeah. I don't play about my woman. Yeah. That's this is the sure, most yeah. this is my most precious prized possession. Mm -hmm. Man, forget all these diamonds. This ain't real. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Forget yeah. these earrings. Like yeah. haircut don't mean nothing. Yeah. This is my most precious prized mm -hmm. possession. Because when you get you a real solid woman, mm -hmm. that's when you're non drifting. Going mm -hmm. back to the book. Yeah. Uh out with the devil. Yeah. I'll, Somebody just told me about that book maybe like a week ago. I downloaded the audio, so yes. yeah. And that's the to me, that's the best yeah. version. Yeah. Because you can actually hear Satan saying, mm -hmm. A woman, like, well, Napoleon Hill asked Satan, he said, mm -hmm. man, so I'm not drifting anymore, am I? He said, no, you're not, because the most ridiculous thing happened to you, what happened to me for you. He's like, mm -hmm. what's that? You married your wife. 
Mm-hmm. She got you on track. <laughs> she made mm-hmm. sure you weren't doing it. Because what a woman does for a man, oh my goodness, man. Mm-hmm. It's just <laughs> that's a whole nother yeah. that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But just it's keep like, it brief. Yeah. What a woman does for a man is like they keep us in line. They make us see certain things a certain mm-hmm. way. They keep our house in order. You know, we're clean, yeah. but they may clean a different way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they give us different ideas that we never would have thought of. Mm-hmm. They give us organization. They relieve us. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're they're our therapists. Yeah. That she's my main consultant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I could be out in the day like right now and she'll come, hey babe, did you think about this yeah. for your business? Why did not I think of that? Yeah. <laughs> <You> <laughs> no, know, right? fact. That's why you with me though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, for sure. So women, man, they they have a secret superpower that a lot mm-hmm. of people, like, a lot of men just don't understand. But once, as a man, you understand that, yeah. you're not drifting anymore because yeah. a lot of men, hey, I get it, bro. It's Atlanta. Yeah. I mean, just in the world, like, yeah. it's a lot of beautiful women in the yeah. world. Like For humans sure. are evolving, and we're looking better and better and better. Mm-hmm. Colored eyes, long, yeah. pretty hair, or even short hair. Yeah. Man, the short hair look good. Hair, all skin that, yeah. look good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got these different skin regimens. Mm-hmm. Bodies getting done. Yeah. You know Working what I'm saying? Out. Not the wash bodies, but, yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that natural stuff yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Now, I, know, I, yeah, I mean, to each his own, I even mean, to on each that, yeah. Look, I, I, I love, like, you getting your body done, I just like for it to look natural. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I want that. If you happy, mm. I love it. That's that's what matters to me. Exactly. Yeah. But, man, um, I get it, man. Like, you want <laughs> you want all these different women. You want different mm-hmm. types. I get it, you know. Mm-hmm. And you don't know which one to choose because mm-hmm. I remember my uncle telling me, like, man, when you get old, you can be like, well, I want this one, I want yeah. this one, I want this one. And that's exactly what I was doing, yeah. especially when I became a bachelor. Yeah. You know, I got my first apartment. Yeah. But um, not to go on, off on the deep end, like, no, I remember Steve Harvey, uh, I was listening to Steve Harvey, how he was telling uh, Shannon Sharp. Mm-hmm. He said, man, when I met my wife, Marjorie. Yeah. Before I before I started talking to her, I just got divorced. I was about to have them coming by the busloads. Like I was, about, mm-hmm. I had pictures on the wall. I'm getting this one, this one. This. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was on that same type of time. Yeah. Like I, that's why I love Steve Harvey. I yeah. feel like I the live through him. Yeah, like, oh, for sure. Goodness. So real. I'm like, yo, the real. Yeah. I was about to. <laughs> I, I was so tied down to you know within my family. Yeah. Everybody thought I was married. I wasn't yeah. married yet. I was yeah. working towards it, but yeah. things don't work. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Which is okay, but. That's how serious I treat my women and treat mm-hmm. my relationships. Yeah. Man, I, I I'm a sniper. You yeah. know, I was I was ready to snipe, bro. Yeah. My woman came through. Oh, that went out the way. And God yeah. said, "Oh no, mm, yeah. you ain't doing that. Don't even think about it." My, my life changed, man. Like sure. I'm more focused. I'm more happy. Like I've <laughs> I've never seen so many people tell me, "Man, you look happy." Yeah. I'm like, what? As I thought should. I always was happy. Yeah. You can fake a smile. Yeah. And I seen I, I, I was faking a smile for two the years. Energy ain't gonna lie. What? That energy is not gonna lie. Man, one of my friends was telling her, like, man, I'm so glad you keep my friend happy. She's like, well, yeah. how was he looking before? Because everybody can tell me that. <laughs> like a sad no, puppy. Yeah, not a sad puppy. <laughs> nah, for sure. Well, nah, man. I'm glad we could have you on for real, bro, because mm-hmm. it's so much. I mean, even though it's so much more we could still talk about. And just before we wrap, I wanted I wanted to shout out my aunt because mm-hmm. that's why I brought up the health and taking care of our bodies. And like you said, it, it, like I said, it's evolving through experience in every aspect. Mm-hmm. I want to shout out to her because even yesterday, um, she gave up her kidney for my grandmother, wow. and, and that takes a lot. Like that's a Jeez. that's a wow. real okay. that's a real life surgery. So I, I I left the hospital this morning like two a.m. and still got up this morning at seven thirty to work out, do a small workout. I couldn't hit the gym today, but mm-hmm. I did a small workout because it's like I can't do any excuses with taking care of my body. Obviously, working out is just not enough. Mm-hmm. So it's like every day, every month, I'm trying to get better at like increasing how I could better myself, okay. and not in the sense of where it's overwhelming, but just in the sense like yo, I can't play with this especially with this being like my main household Mm -hmm. like yo i gotta lead by example show them like look i that's why i went cold turkey too like that's one of the reasons i went cold turkey is like i can't have step with taking care of my body and my health Mm -hmm. especially knowing like this is what my family is going through and even before this like family health issues or whatnot Mm -hmm. so again this episode is definitely dedicated to her because it's like that takes a lot for her so shout out to my aunt for sure. Shout out to it because nah, we sure. was talking about that yeah. yesterday too, man. I'm yeah. so sorry. I forgot about that, man. No, nah, no, nah, oh you good. Goodness. I told you yesterday. What you, how you forget? You ain't forget. Wait, well, no, you just yeah, oh. it slipped my mind. Oh, today. I okay, I got you, it, man. Yeah, I, yeah. That that was something major. Nah, I, I didn't sure. know she was giving up a kidney like yeah, that. Yeah, that's why I was serious. two surgeries. That's why I was wow. like, as soon as I left, it's like I'm I'm at both, and then people like you even asked like, why you sure you don't want to reschedule? It's like, no, I don't want to reschedule because 
this is not just a podcast. This is real life, a healthcare company I'm building. Mm -hmm. Podcast may be a small part of that, mm -hmm. but it's like people have to understand, like, this is how serious I'm taking this. Like, so even after here, I'm, I'm going to go there and make sure they straight. Obviously, it was a successful one, mm -hmm. but I just want people to see, like, bro, like, this is life or death for me, too. Most definitely. Like, I can't. I can't play with anything, like, and that's why even I was proud, like, I didn't go get that drink knowing, like, like, then I would have been at somewhat of a hypocrite, like, I'm telling, like, no, I'm not drinking, but then I get, have a bad day, and now I want to go drink. It's like, but that's just me being transparent that to show people, like, I go through it too. So, um, yeah, so any, uh, where can people follow you at? Any last words you want to just leave off or even comment on what I just said? I don't want to cut your wisdom. Oh, no, you good. Uh, you can't follow me on Instagram at... Von Keith underscore the artist B O N K E I T H. You type in and B O N K, it in. yeah, it's over with. Like, yeah, my my page pops up. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm also on Facebook under cool. Vontorius Richard. Uh, mm -hmm. YouTube, man, I'm I'm really going hard on YouTube right now. Uh, you can follow me under Von Keith the artist as well. And I'll tag all under, of those. I appreciate yeah. that, man. Um, one last note though, because mm -hmm. I know you was talking about health a lot. One thing that I have been focusing on a lot lately is mm -hmm. fasting. Okay, uh, fast. The importance of fasting goes over so many people's heads. Exactly. Um, fasting actually cleanses your body. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It it creates more white blood cells, just like sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, sleep it, it cleanses your body as well. But when you fast and when you don't have so many different things in your gut or mm -hmm. anything, yeah. then your body is able to recuperate. For sure. Whatnot. So I have been doing a lot of intermittent fasting, like. I remember hearing Malcolm X on the eight one time a day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how in the hell? What? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Shout out to Malcolm X. And he Max. didn't even, I don't think he ate meat. Yeah. You know? So, shouts out to him, man. Oh, so, you coming to the vegan side is what I'm hearing. Not, not, <laughs> see, nah, I, I'm joking. No yeah, pressure, bro. I'm joking. I mean, yeah. one, thing, one thing about being vegan, right? It's mm -hmm. like, to each his own. Yeah, to each but, his own for sure. Um, I do like a I do like a little sense of protein, but what yeah. I do, um, I did meet a woman who who was vegan. She's mm -hmm. from Israel. Mm -hmm. She said, "I said, how, how did you do it?" She said, mm -hmm. "Just start by just taking one meal a day and don't eat meat with it." Mm -hmm. I'm like man, that is psychological. Yeah. At first, my first week doing it, it was so psychological. Mm -hmm. I, I psyched myself out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, exactly. I am not eat. I, I was eating a black bean burger. Yep. And I'm looking for the beef taste. I'm like, yeah. Not, not <laughs> almost cried. Yeah. You know, but it became better. Yeah. So now. Exactly. I can intertwine and mix both of them. You know, yeah. now, I, now my body tells me, hey, you eating too much meat. Correct. <laughs> now my body is telling me, hey, I, I need some fiber, bro. Yeah. Go eat some greens, you mm -hmm. know. So, yeah, fasting is the key essential source to surviving and living long and staying yeah. youthful. That's my that's that's no nah. that's my nah, last for word. Sure. I'm glad you said that again. Like like I said, to each his own at, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it is mental a psycho psychology um yeah. psychological. Um, because again, like you remember yesterday, he was like, yo, like you you did a whole shift. Like you was like, yo, something happened. And <laughs> like mm -hmm. something happened. And it's like, bro, like that's why I think it's so easy for me. Like I can't deviate, I can't play. It's like that discipline, like you said, even fasting. And mm -hmm. fast from a lot, cut out the alcohol, cut out sex, like cut out a lot of different things. It's intentional, not because I had to, but it's like it's really cause I do have to. That's the crazy part. Okay. So it's like just locking in or whatnot. So well, yeah, can I man. Ask you this, oh, go ahead. Do you have like do you feel like you have an addictive personality? Addictive personality? Yeah. And what it depends on what sense. I don't feel like I mean, I feel like I'm a vibe. I mean, at the end of the day, okay. as far as when I meet people, it's like it's genuine. So yeah, like as far as that, yeah. When it's connected with other genuine people, mm -hmm. yes. I'm speaking of if you was to take that drink. Do you feel like you were gonna keep drinking? If you No, nah, I don't nah, nah, it wouldn't nah, it's ain't, it, I wouldn't have let it get to there because like I've been Working out, this, this, I would have bounced back probably the same night or this next day. I don't feel like I would have kept doing it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, like I said, I can't have step it. So I didn't want to do it just because I'm having a bad day. Because yeah. these are the days where I really don't need it because I'm having yeah. a bad day. Of course. So, yeah. So I guess I was just saying, I was going to say, on the good days, mm -hmm. don't be too hard on yourself. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, I'm working on it, yeah. But, but I do get it, man. And that's why I love your wisdom. Just to give you your flowers real quick. Like, Appreciate it, bro. Uh, when I first met you, yeah, when I said you were being picky, <laughs> I was like... <laughs> It's something about you, man. I don't know what it is, but it's something about your aura. It's something about yeah. your spirit. Because honestly, at that point in time, Darrell, yeah. I would have been like, yeah, I don't know about him. I would have called yeah. Ryan like, hey, bro, don't be sending me no, no picky people or whatever. You know, he was tripping in my chair, but I was like, uh, bro, you young, yeah. and I see a lot in you. You yeah, know, appreciate and that, man. Look at where bro. we are now. Yeah. Five, what, five years later? Yeah. Come on, yeah, man. man. Like, I got to start reminding me of these age, man. I'm trying to go backwards. It's like about to be, a, it's half a decade. That is crazy. I like being old. And that's the point, though. <laughs> you see, like, it's been five years. Like, that's why it's like, yo, we can't play with it. I got I to gotta get it in now. But like I said, without feeling overwhelmed and taking a, a break. So I'm mm -hmm. working on it, man. That's the thing. I'm working on yeah. it. I mean, yeah. because, you know, one of my clients, he said, bro, if you tired, man, sometimes you yeah. come in, take a little shot. Yeah. 
put, put, <laughs> freshen yourself back yeah. up. Go get yeah. you a shower. Mm -hmm. What's up, baby? Mm, kiss yeah. your babies. You back yeah. at it. You know. Yeah. Sometimes you need that. I mean, yeah. it's not. I guess I was I was asking, mm -hmm. is it? Do you have an addictive personality? I ain't gonna lie, I do. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm a connoisseur for weed. Yeah. I have to alleviate some kind yeah. of way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, I'm not saying. I all go day, overboard. Like, I ain't yeah. about to come in here high. That's you a whole nother. We're we gonna have a whole nother podcast session on that. Trust <laughs> yeah. me. I want to get down to that. But yeah, I, I mean, when when I know I need to calm down or slow down, mm -hmm. I just like, hey, yeah. I don't need that. You know, I have to mm -hmm. I have to be more disciplined. Mm -hmm. But I am Even disciplined that, yeah. enough to where I'm like, hey, I don't need that today. Yeah. I need to focus. I need to get this That's done. That's good. You know, or like if I'm at work, I'm not about to go smoke some weed outside. Correct. And come back to a client, they smelling, yeah. you know, <laughs> the cigarettes. Guy on you know, yeah. like, you're like, man. Yeah. Stink, yeah, well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, so that's why I was asking that. But you know, it's balance, yeah. Just balance, man. Unbalanced, don't be, don't be balance, too hard on yeah. yourself. No, nah, for sure. I, I appreciate it. it. Well, now nah, if y'all gain anything from this episode, another episode of Evolving Through Experience, make sure you share the brand, like the post, subscribe to our YouTube. Um, and at the end of the day, if you're growing in any aspect, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically and beyond, this is definitely for you. This is not just a podcast. This is bigger than podcasts. This is a healthcare company. Um, and also make sure y'all shop Project Prevail. And Project Prevail is just a initiative under Evolving Through Experience where anytime you shop anything from a brand, one of the hats, a, a wristband, a shirt, a hoodie, you know it's going back, a percentage is going back to help somebody in need. We don't want to just talk about giving back, but we want to actually have real 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 tangible and intangibles that go back to help people out um so again we did that in 2019 2020 if i'm not mistaken we gave uh money from every sale i gave actually 100 percent of profits of shirts um two shirts i made to tamika mallory until freedom so at the end day we're going to wow. scale this up a lot further further um and just keep continuing doing what we're doing so if you like the episode make sure you follow us at evolving through experience shout us out and keep sharing appreciate it Pat yourself on the back for that one, bro. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it, man. For sure. The rap.